Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is John Jank Gaming on the mic here, coming at you at the host of the Horizon Tournament here at the campus of Cleveland State, where we jump into the second round of the Horizon Tournament as your Youngstown State Penguins are going to be taking on the Titans of Detroit Mercy University as we go ahead and see both coaches talking to their squads real quick as Andrew Kirby Jr. going into his second season as the head coach of Youngstown State Basketball does have his guys over 500 for the very first time uh, during his tenure so yo definitely a lot of progress for sure within this program so it's gonna be a really good one man make sure you go ahead smash that like button hit subscribe if you do happen to be brand new by the way as we go ahead and take a look at the key players for both teams as Lucas Estrada the star player for Detroit Mercy you know, going to be a real important piece in Vadim Parker, who is building in for the still injured Jordan Andrews. He is going to have his hands full, but here's the starting lineups for both teams here as we go ahead and get things tipped off and officially underway as the true freshman Justin Jones wins the tip off. And we'll go ahead and get this thing underway now. As Youngstown State will start its very first possession. Getting it inside to Birdie Footlock. Gets his rebound though. And will get the putback. So the Penguins will go ahead and score first in this one. And he's got a very close game here early on as Walton. He's going to back it out a little bit. Get it out to Lucas Gill. Back to Walton for the mid-ranger. Danger, it's no good. And Justin Jones will get the rebound. Looking to go coast to coast. Who gets it out to the senior, Rishafino, who throws it down. And the Penguins will retake the lead. And now, the Titans of Detroit Mercy looking for a response. Do they have something in the tank here early? No good. And this is when we're the most dangerous on the move. Birdie, slam, oh! Does that bucket count? Did that bucket go in or will we have two free throws? It, I fought again, but it looks like it was denied at the last second. Um, but it looks like they do count the basket, and Birdie Footlock does end up making the and one free throw. As we'll get it inside once again to reach Safino. He's off to a hot start. He's already making both of his actual always two for free. But what we've seen so far, you know, he's made the first couple of shots. And now has four points in this one. As Detroit looking for a response. Gets out to Estrada for the free ball. That's no good. Here comes Youngstown State again. Furry making business decisions out here, man. Birdie Footlock. Absolute menace to society. And we're seeing it here early in this Horizon Conference Tournament. As we jump out to a 11-2 run to get things going. But Mercy will fire back as Nicole's will get the three-pointer to go. And he'll also get that mid-ranger danger. So five straight points for Nick Nicole's. As it's only down to a four-point deficit now. They're right back into this. But Justin James, he gets the block. He also gets the rebound. Does he get the bucket? No. Gets it to Rissafino, who won't get the slam jam. But he will lay it up. It is an easy two points as Reese Shafino has been playing extremely well so far today and getting just being extremely aggressive towards the basket as he will draw a foul on Lucas Estrada. And Shafino does make one of two free throws, does make it an eight point game as Jones. Welcome to attack. This is our center, by the way, who just absolutely violates a guard. Oh, my goodness. Justin Jones, man, you want to talk about a guy that is playing higher than his overall? Certainly, you know, Justin Jones falls under that description, man. He has been 
so fun to play with, especially in gameplay. Is that that poster? That's got to be distributed in the Youngstown State Bookstore real quick, you know. But a six-point lead despite that. Detroit Mercy still hanging. Nick Coles for the mid-ranger danger. That actually does end up sinking. They don't count it as a free, though. His foot was on the line as it cut it down to a two-possession game. Nick Coles looking to see if he can get down to just one possession as they get it out to Estrada in the corner. Takes the pick and roll. Gets it back to Nicole's for the mid-ranger danger. And that's also sunk. So just a two-point game here. As we got to go back to what got us that big lead. We try to go inside for Justin, uh, Justin Jones. But he can't get the post hook to go. But Reese Safino does end up coming through for us, though. He now has nine points in this game. As we've got a four-point deficit. But Justin Jones... Gets the steal, almost lost it, but gets it out to Reese Fino, who cuts it inside to the point guard, Cam Jones, who no relation, as one of the Detroit Mercy players are already going to be in some foul trouble here. And still a four-point game here. And Nicole gets it out to Estrada for a three-pointer and bangs it home. Back and forth affair. Doing it in different ways. Detroit Mercy doing so more with the jump shot. We're abusing on the inside. As they have not been able to get into the paint very easily. Us on the other hand. We don't have too much of a problem. But we can shoot two occasionally. As Savanovic will get his first points. Courtesy of the free ball. And it's a 25-21 to 21 game. As Detroit Mercy. They trying to answer back. But that's no good. Vadim Parker gets the rebound. He's a free point specialist. But he can still go up there and jam it home too. So a six-point lead now as Vadim Parker with the jam. As Houston looking to get it out to Nichols. He can shoot it. Gets it inside to Armstrong. Somehow gets through right in between Finn Otis. And I believe Bertie Footlock is also in the game currently as well. So somehow managing to get that to go. But... Cam Jones gets the steal, goes the other way, back, gets it out to Zivanovic, doesn't settle for that three-point ball, and Zivanovic off the bench has seven points in this one, as Millage gonna get it, kick it out, tries to, but look who gets the steal as well, it's Jody Gentry who goes coast to coast with it, and that's gonna slam it down home. But the thing about why conference tournaments can be so difficult is, I mean, we, we come in a little bit hobbled. So Chris Ty usually doesn't get a lot of playing time. You know, more known for his prowess on the football field, but making some mistakes on the basketball court here in early action for him. As Detroit has a chance to try to claw themselves back into this game, but the backups, man, you know, keeping it up. And Reese Safino just continuing to set that tone. The senior from Virginia Beach does not want his collegiate career to end. At least not today at the very least. And it's an eight-point game here to going into the final couple of minutes of this first half. As Gill kicks it inside, but it's stolen again. And Justin Jones, watch out for him. He's got a matchup. Bang! Lucas Gill called for the block and you want to talk about insult to injury he just got put on another poster that's the second time in this game already that justin james or justin jones i should say has posterized somebody as that is actually going to wrap up the first half of play very good offensive first half but detroit mercy they are hanging tough they're they're shooters man they're doing a good job of shooting that free ball but we got to really talk about reese fino though he has been a spark plug, not always a first option in our offense, but today, it's been his time to shine. 11 points, 5 for 7 from the field. It's been a very good first half so far. So we go ahead and jump into the second half of action here, as we do have this 8-point lead, but we cannot take our, our foot off the gas pedal. We cannot afford that. If we do, 
then our season is gonna end just like that and we don't we certainly do not want that is justin jones gets the block his third one of the day shafino bringing it down court can justin jones finish the other end yes sir and it's now 13 points for justin jones very good shooting for him his work in the paint so far six for eight from the field as he will end up snagging yet another rebound as this time he will get it out to cam jones who attacks the paint and how about cam jones also doing his thing mostly known for distributing but he didn't get to the basket as well he knows how to attack the hoop and he now has seven points the lead now growing into double digits as Estrada responds in kind. Now with nine points in this one, including a second three-pointer. Although other than that, he has struggled from the field, and that's why Detroit has been down for the majority of this game, but still keeping it in striking distance. Collison with a three-point jumper of his own, but he's not going to be able to get it to go. Here comes Safino. Getting it to Justin Jones and another slam for the freshman center. And now 15 points for Justin Jones. And it's to a point here where they're beginning to do some double teaming. But we got multiple weapons on this team. I mean, Birdie Footlock, Finn Lotus, who's been coming off the bench, Reese Safino, who's been having a great day as Footlock. He attacks himself, but that's no good. And here comes Detroit. Going the other way, Estrada settling in real quick. Looking for a lane to attack. Gets it inside to Walton. And Walton will end up finishing over Finn Otis, the four star Juco, in his first year of Division I college basketball. As we try to steal with Cam Jones, but it almost goes poorly. But you know who doesn't go poorly for? Vadim Parker. Getting yet another easy basket for this team. And the offensive output for us really in this one has been absolutely insane. 62 points already and we're not even through half of the second half, you know. Like we still have a lot more basketball left to play as Vadim Parker will go ahead get himself yet another easy dunk. So now, four, actually a 16-point lead, but it will get cut down to 14. With Houston getting an easy steal in transition. And a 14-point lead nonetheless. It's Houston. Gets it stolen from. And here comes Youngstown State again. Going inside to Reese Fino, Who gets the easy lay-in. And that will now be 13 points for Reese Fino, And also a few steals, too been doing a little bit of everything so far as a 16 point lead we're gonna get it up to 18 finn attacking oh one the throw the hammer down on armstrong but he will at least draw the foul there and it will be an 18 point game and looking to get up to 20 points a double team coming but cam jones is open had to get it out safino though doesn't have to and Uses the screen from Justin Jones. And now we got two separate players in this game with 15 points or more. That's Reese Safino, the senior, and Justin Jones, the freshman, as well as the Coles. Shooting from free. He will get that one to go. But just not enough firepower for Detroit Mercy in this one. As we're just blowing the doors away from him here in this second half. I mean, it's going. To actually take a miracle for them to come back and win this game. And as Safino gets yet another rebound, his sixth rebound, Safino gets to the hoop and gets it to go. I'm going to go ahead and sim to the end because as far as I'm concerned, this is barbecued chicken for to me. So that lead that we did end up building, you know, ends up carrying us to a 24-point victory over the Detroit Titans, now known as Detroit Mercy, since they did uh, rebrand their university since this game originally came out. And look, Detroit shot solid from the three-point line, 7 for 22. That kept them in this game for a little bit, but 
you know, eventually we just end up taking over. Uh, we had far more free throw shots and we had a higher free throw percentage, matter of fact. More assists and turnovers, that's always good to see. And, um, you know, we, we were even on the total rebounds. Uh, surprisingly, did not show. Uh, we, ha we definitely had more than four points in the paint. That's not accurate at all. But great game for our guys once again. And we will advance for the second time in this series to the Horizon League semifinals. And doing so with all of our starters getting into double figures. Cam Jones ends up with 12 points off of 5 assists and 3 steals. Vadim Parker ends up 5 for 9, including 1 for 5 from the 3 point line. He ends up with 11 points, 3 rounds, 2 assists, and 4 steals. Shafino, actually, Reese Shafino, the senior from Virginia Beach, ends up being our leader scoring in this one. Almost ends up with a double double 19 points, 8 boards. Also chipped in with 3 assists and 3 steals. Birdie Footwalk, despite being in some foul trouble, ends up with 12 points in this one and a few rebounds. Justin Jones, the freshman center from Aluria, Ohio, man. He comes through also near with a double-double as well. 15-9, and nine, two assists, three steals, three blocks. Did a little bit of everything. Did not get a lot from our bench, and I think uh, if we do end up playing Butler, we will have to get more from our bench if we want to advance to the conference championship so we take a quick break from the hardwood just to kind of peek in on how the offseason for our football program is going right now so what ended up happening i wanted to show a little bit more but what unfortunately did end up happening is um i forgot to click the record button uh going over like you know guys graduating um as well as guys that are going to go ahead and uh leave the transfer portal as well as what my plan was but i did focus in on recruiting as well as the the training aspect uh, of our football program so uh one thing that did happen michael blunt he was the backup fullback to isaac jefferson he actually did enter the transfer portal and he did end up making his decision uh, during the course of the uh, you know recruiting process. And uh, Michael Blunt is now going to be playing for the Sanford Bulldogs. He is going to be the highest rated fullback on the team, but he did not get a waiver. And so he'll have to at least sit out for a year uh, before he can play uh, with that program. But the beautiful thing about our football team and what's kind of uh, like nice uh, with these sanctions that we do have to deal with is that we do have the ability to go for quality instead of quantity, right? So we did not bring in a ton of players in. Um, we can only bring in 15 tops. Uh, we're going to end up bringing in 13 scholarship guys plus a um, a walk-on as well. Sorry, my dog scared me a little bit. Don't know if y'all could hear that. But anyways, we end up bringing in some really good talent, particularly on the defensive side of football. Timmy Britton is the number one strong safety in America uh, at the high school level, and he signs with us. And we also signed five-star defensive end Micah McLean. He's from Centerville, Ohio, so we kept him in state. Other really good signings for our program as well is Jordan Smith, who probably will start on the opposite side. Richmond Bates, which was um, just really a uh, desperate help that we needed. And a, a ton of help for our offensive line. We signed four guards. Nick Hawkins, Joe Reed, David Allen, who we signed during the regular season, and Joe Crawford. So we really beefed up the offensive line. Also ended up bringing in Ed Ortiz as well. He's a four-star from Aurora, Ohio. And then we kind of filled out the rest of the roster as well. Jazz Jones is a free star free safety. Um, he can come in and you know be a solid backup uh, because we did sign a really good free safety last year. Quinn Williams can be a cornerback too. He's from Ken Akers, Delaware. And then uh, guys that we have that you know are gonna fill in needs. Donnie Williams, two star, and then David Frazier. Not as good as Michael Blount, I would imagine, but we at least avoid the walk-on uh, for the vast majority of our positions. Now, this does mean that, now where does our recruiting class rank? So, um, you know, number one, we do have the New Hampshire Wildcats, who do end up with the number one recruiting class, followed by North Dakota State, 
Uh, but a lot of these programs, you know, they're able to bring in 20, 25 guys. We're on sanctions, so we only have 15 scholarships. But despite that, we did end up bringing in a top 10 class. And I'm going to be expecting that top 10 class to contribute right away in order to improve from the 3-8 and eight season that we had this past season. So we'll take a look around at the, um, you know, really the, you know, the results from other tournament games within our conference. Butler, of course, takes care of business against Cleveland State. They end up winning by 20 uh, with similar margin of victory that we had. Loyola, actually there was a lot of blowouts really here in this second round in the Horizon League. Uh, Loyola beats Green Bay by 25 and then Wright State beats the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. They win by 22, so a lot of blowouts here as we get into really this Final Four. And matter of fact, um, the other semifinal game has already been played, and Wright State does beat Loyola. So if we do end up winning this game against Butler, that's who we will face in the conference championship. And we kind of struggle against Wright State. We've lost plenty of games in this series against them in Sim. But we haven't played them in gameplay yet, and neither have we played against this Butler squad. Now, Butler is probably on the bubble if they were to try to get in as an at-large. They are 22-8 with a 51 RPI. That could be good enough to get in without winning the conference tournament. But we don't have that same luxury, right? RPI still in the 190s. So we are definitely not on anyone's radar to make it as an at-large. If we want to get in, we have to get in by virtue of winning our conference tournament. And Butler, Butler is not going to be easy, man. They are the most talented team in the conference. They won the regular season title. So even if they don't make it to the um, NCAA tournament, they will be going to the NIT. But yeah, man, that's who we have next episode. Next time out, we will have the conference semifinals against butler man i hope you guys are excited for it if you are make sure you go ahead smash that like button hit subscribe as well if you do happen to be brand new this is john shake gaming on the mic signing off hoping you're all out there having a good one take care everybody